I've always enjoyed the landscape. It's always been something I've been interested in ever since I was a kid. I used to go hiking and so forth. And uh, when I went to college, I was an English major, but I was focusing in on landscapes from the standpoint of what the subject matter was. I was a big follower of Henry David Thoreau, read all of his journals, and he was you know, very much into nature and the landscape. Uh, so it just kind of naturally evolves that way. And uh, as someone who does a lot of hiking, it's just, it's just natural, it's in my blood. So I would always rather be in the landscape or paint the landscape than do a still life or figure. Well, initially when I start the painting, it's very analytical. I'm using that part of the brain to determine what's lighter, what's darker, what's cooler, what's warmer, what's richer and what's duller and so forth. But once you get the block in established and begin to start pushing things and shifting things, making adjustments, it becomes a little more intuitive. You stop thinking so much and you start just feeling your way through it. And all of a sudden you'll hit these intersections of things where it just feels right and you just kind of move more toward that. It it's attracts you that way. It's like a magnet where the better feels, the more you go in that direction and trying to follow it. Eventually you just start feeling the pulse of the painting uh, and that just makes the whole thing come alive and that's a real pleasurable experience. Hi, I'm Michael Chesley Johnson. I paint landscapes both outdoors and in the studio. When I'm painting en plein air, I will often make use of a wet into wet painting technique because of time issues. Shadows are moving and we're trying to capture the moment, so we have to apply layers of paint one on top of another. It takes practice to make this method of painting work, but it's an important skill to learn and comes in handy in the studio as well. Painting wet into wet allows you to start and finish a painting in just a couple of hours. It helps you stay loose and will give you an energy to your work with juicy brush strokes and rich color. In this video, I'll share my wet into wet painting techniques so you can enjoy and take advantage of this painterly style. When I'm painting wet into wet, uh, the tools and materials I'm using are pretty important for that technique to work successfully. So I'll be talking a little bit about the paint I use, some of the mediums I use, the brushes I use, and also the surface that I paint on. So let's first take a look at the paint that I use. If you look down at the palette, I have my usual split primary palette, uh, which consists of a warm and a cool version of each of the oil paints. So I have two yellows, two reds, a blue and a green. And just for reference, this is Cad Yellow Light, Cad Yellow Deep, Cad Red, Permanent Alizarin Crimson, Ultramarine Blue, and Thalo Emerald. And in addition to those two colors, I have Titanium Zinc White, and also uh, some chromatic black. This is from Gamblin, and it's basically just a cool and a warm version, a cool and a, a cool version of a red and a green, the losing crimson and the uh, thalo emerald. For my paints, I like to have the uh, paints fairly fairly buttery. So if you take a look at this, you can see how buttery that looks, just like warm butter on a hot day. If you look at this one, it's very similar. It's a little looser, has a little more oil in it, but it's still perfectly good for this process. And if you look at this one, the Thalo Green or Emerald, it's got a little more oil on it than I like. So one thing you can do here, if it's too oily, is you can take a paper towel and just kind of blot it around the edges a little bit to soak up a little bit of that excess. The Thalo is very strong tinting strength, so uh, you have to remember that uh, if you get this in your clothes or on your person, it will it'll stain. There, that's a little better. And then I can just clean this up and push that pile back together like that. And that'll be good. If your paints aren't uh, quite buttery enough, you can add uh, some mediums to it. And there are a couple that I use. One is um, Galkid Light. This is from Gamblin. And it's a little more uh, loose in the bottle. It's viscous, but it still has quite a bit of flow to it. So if I just pour a little bit out for you, you can see what that looks like. It's like maple syrup. If your paint is too thick, you can use a little bit of that to, um, to loosen up the paint a little bit. This will also dry your paints a little faster. It's an alkyd medium, which means that it's got a, uh, a resin added to it that increases the, uh, or decreases the, the drying time. Paint uh, applied with this in thin layers will dry in about 24 hours. The other product I use, which I'm starting to like a lot these days, is the solvent-free gel from Gamblin. 
What I like about it is that it's a little more viscous. It's more like, like hair gel, I guess. Something like that. And if you push a bit of that around, you can see how it's, uh, it's like that, a little bit of gel. If you add this to your thicker paints, it'll make it a little looser and more workable, more buttery. Um, and it also increase the drying or decrease the drying time, make things dry faster, just like the um, the Galkid light over here on the right. So those are a couple of things that I like to add to it, only if I need to. Uh, usually the paints that I get are are fairly uh, fairly loose like that. Now let's talk a minute about the brushes that I use. I like the um, the natural hog bristle flats, and I like to have two of each size. So for what I'll be painting today, I've got two of this size, which is about a, a six, and then two fours, and then two twos. And these are just the flats with the natural uh, chisel shape to the tip. They get more worn and more filbert-like as they get used. But the nice thing about these is that they hold quite a bit of paint, uh, and they're durable, so they allow me to, to scrub on the surface like this. So if I have to take a the paint and really work it into the surface, I can do that. But they also are very stiff, so that if I want to apply um, paint on top of paint, I can take it like this and just it stays stiff enough that it doesn't stir down into that lower layer and muddy up the color. So we'll be using those today. Another tool that I like to use is a painting knife. And if you've ever frosted a cake, the painting knife is a real good tool. It's just like frosting a cake. You can get a big gob of uh, paint on that and just lay it on very delicately on top of surfaces. This is a uh, fairly small knife. It uh, has a nice um, trowel shape to it and uh, this really helps to just kind of work in small areas but I can also use it for larger areas as well. Now let's talk a little bit about the, um, the surfaces I use. This is a homemade surface. It's basically a sheet of hardboard or MDF or masonite is another name for it. It's 1 8 inch thick and I've applied a layer of uh, PVA size to it, polyvinyl acetate followed by a couple of layers of um, acrylic gesso. I've just used a regular two inch house painting brush to apply the gesso and I've left a lot of the, uh, the texture showing from the brush marks. I kind of like this because it just adds a more interesting surface texture to the final painting. Uh, you can also get other surfaces uh, such as gesso, uh, ampersand gesso board which is what I'll be using for the demonstration. But I wanted to show you this because it's a, it's a very inexpensive homemade surface you can make yourself. You have a lot of control over what's happening with the texture and it's also, um, it's also very absorbent. So if you're painting wet into wet it's important to have a fairly absorbent sur surface. The uh, ampersand gesso board is a little less absorbent but you can still get exactly the same effect with that. Now that we've gone over the tools and materials, let me show you a couple of techniques that I use for holding the brush and holding the knife. What I'll do first is um, take up my larger brush and just take a little paint. Let's start with um, this CAD Red, for example. And you can see how buttery that is. And without applying any thinner to it at all, I can take this brush and pull it up to the panel and just put down a little bit of that. You can see how the uh, brush stroke breaks against that surface. You can still see some of the gesso popping through. So this is sort of sliding along the surface but it's still very dry. If I were to add a little thinner to that, which is what we normally do with um, starting the initial block in or the wash, it makes the paint a little looser and has a little more coverage. Either one of these will work for the uh, wet into wet technique but if you add too much thinner to it like this for example, what's going to happen is it's just going to drip and run and not dry fast enough so that we can apply paint on top of that. So just very quickly let me go over here and apply another batch of that same color because I'm going to use both the brush and the knife to show you a couple of things. So there's that very dry patch. Now will add a little more thinner to it. Bring this down here, maybe a little bit more. And you can see how I wear my brushes out pretty fast. This is uh, a fairly rough surface. Okay, now let's rinse the brush off just a little bit. Whenever you rinse off your brush, make sure you dry it as best you can in a paper towel or some sort of absorbent uh, cloth because you don't want that uh, thinner to dilute or thin the next bit of paint too much. Otherwise, it'll muddy up that first layer. So this is still wet. If I take my finger, you can see how wet this is still. I'm going to take some blue paint. 
And when I'm working wet into wet and applying that second layer, I want to have quite a bit of paint on my brush, something like that. And I can just take it, hold the brush so that it's parallel to the painting surface, and just barely touch the painting surface. Let the, uh, let the surface pull the paint off the brush instead of you brushing it on. And you can apply a nice stroke of paint on top of wet paint like that without getting it stirred up and muddied. Let's try that again with a different color. Take a little green. Same thing. Just let it kiss the paint off the brush. Even if it breaks a bit like that, that's good because it lets some of that first layer show through, giving more interest to that uh, final paint surface. Now let's try it with a knife over on this side. Basically, it's the same idea. We're treating the uh, brush like a knife, and here's the knife, and I'll show you how that works. Take a little bit of the blue paint. There's a fairly large gob of it on there. Same idea. Just hold it, stroke it across like that. If I want to uh, put a little more coverage on, I can take it and drag it down this way. If I want to get a thin line of wet paint on top of wet, I can hold it like this, just holding the edge against the, uh, the painting surface. Put down a fairly thin line like that. Both of these uh, approaches take a little uh, bit of time to develop the knack and the skill for doing that, but it's well worth your effort. It's a little easier with a knife to put wet paint on top of wet, but a lot of times it gives you a sharp edged effect and you might want to use a brush to soften edges or just use the brush exclusively to give you more of a soft edge kind of thing. So now that we've shown you a few of the uh, strokes you can use with painting wet into wet, let's start a painting. For this demonstration, I've chosen a couple of uh, photos based on a, a tidal scene uh, near Lubeck, Maine called Pirate Cove. The, uh, the top photo shows us at high tide, the second photo shows us more at low tide, and I kind of like the uh, effect that's happening in the bottom one. It's a little more interesting with what's happening here with some of the water and some of the rocks flowing through. However, if you squint a bit, uh, the values all kind of pull into one value range. Uh, the top one has a little more value range, which is kind of nice. So um, I'll, although I'll base it on the bottom photo, um, I'll pull in some of the uh, value issues that happen with the top one. Um, now when we look at doing the value sketch, I'm squinting and looking at the simple shapes. So we have a sky shape, a dark tree shape, and this area here where the, um, the tidal water has gone out. So I'll be transferring those in a very simple fashion to my uh, sketch paper. I'll be using a, uh, a 2B pencil, a six, excuse me, a 6B pencil for this. It's a very soft pencil, which allows me to make some very dark darks. And in the process of um, doing the sketch, I want to make sure I'm using just a simple set of values. And I like to use four values in my, in my sketches. So all the way from a fairly dark value to a mid-dark up to a mid-light, and then I'll just let the paper stand for the, the fourth value. Now the eye can see about uh, 100 different steps in value, but you can't use all 100 of those in your painting. It would just take too long to model everything. So I pick four, and it doesn't really matter which four I use so long as I've got them distinct. So I can definitely tell the dark from the mid-dark, from the mid-light, from the light. Uh, and that will give me a very convincing uh, value range to work with to give me the, the sketch that I need. So let's begin. Looking at the sketch or the uh, photo, I'll draw approximately where that distant horizon might be, somewhere like that. Now the land itself has a little bit of a slope to it, so maybe I'll just angle it a little bit more like that. And then mark where the tree shape is, that fir tree, it's about here. And then moving down to the bottom, I'll mark a line where the tidal area seems to end, somewhere about here. And there's another little bit of land that comes out this way, like that. And let's go ahead and establish this tree. It's sort of a triangular shape, something like that. And we don't have to worry about detail at this point. We're just really looking at the simple shapes. 
Uh, one thing to remember too is that um, cameras tend to distort the value range a bit. In this case, uh, looking at the bottom one, um, all the darks are way dark and it's difficult to see any detail in it. The top one's a little better exposed and you can see a little more sky and clouds, whereas the sky is totally blown out in the, in the bottom one. Let's see, let's get this little bit of land out here. Go that way. And now let's just start putting in some values. The tree is going to be one of the darker values. There is a great book by uh, John Carlson called Carlson's Guide to Landscape Painting. And in it, he talks about using four values in a landscape and how that's appropriate and how that makes things go a little faster and makes for an easier process. Uh, and I recommend that you check that out at some point. This little bit of land in the distance will be dark, but maybe not as dark. It's going to be a little lighter. It's more like a mid-dark instead of a dark. And then down here, let's see, let's change this a little bit and get a little bit of that open water area coming in, something like that instead. And then stick a little bit of land. Well, let's move it here. There we go. Gives us room for this little wedge here. It comes out like that. There we go. As the artist, you have the ability to shift nature. You can move mountains if you have to. And then over down here, we've got some interesting shadow shapes where um, the grassy areas create these little cast shadows, which will be kind of fun to play with that pattern. And there's a bit of land that has a ridge that goes this way across that zone. Let's, let's get this value right. Be a little darker. Down here, it's a different kind of color. It's a greener color, whereas this is more of a, a red violet. This is more of a green, but the values are very close. So we're just going to block it all in with the same value. And I'm going to call that a mid light. Same with this grassy area over here in this grassy area here. I can take my finger and solidify or simplify some of these areas. Now, the way I've drawn it so far, we don't have uh, any of the bottom exposed here in this area. This is all water, but I really like that sense of water coming through. So let's go and add a few little light passages where we might have some water which will let us make this all a little darker because it's not water. It's going to be a little darker. It's not reflecting any sky. And then for balancing off this shape here, let's incorporate some of these little dark stones that we have down in this area. This will give us a little more balance to the whole thing. And let's put some of these little shapes in here that are going to be important, I think. Okay. So we've got uh, four values working for us. We've got a light area here, a dark area here, a mid-dark area here, and then more of a mid-light here. If you were to look at the value scale and just so superimpose these, you'll see those values are pretty close to where we want them to be. And if we look at the simple shapes, we've got a shape here. We've got a shape here. We've got these smaller dark shapes. Then we have this mid-light shape. And then we have this light area here and also here. See anything else we need to do with this, or is that pretty good? The question I'm having in my mind is, does, it, does the tree need to come off the top of the page, or does it need to stop short of that? It's so close, I'd be tempted to let's let it go off the top. This is a choice I can make. If you let the um, tree go out of the frame like that, what it will do is give the uh, tree more of a, a larger, more majestic appearance. Um, there's a painting I like to talk about that Hans Holbein painted of Henry VIII. And it's only 8 by 10, 
uh, but it's, uh, Henry's huge in it. His head goes off the top of the frame, his shoulders go out the sides of the frame, and he looks just huge in that little 8x10 painting. So we'll take that into consideration. So I think this is a real good stab at the uh, design, so uh, let's uh, take the next step and transfer that to our painting surface and begin. When I was going over the uh, tools and materials, I was talking about my homemade surface with uh, masonite or MDF board with gesso applied. Here I'm using the ampersand gesso board, and it's basically uh, it's factory made, but it has this nice uh, gesso layer that's got sort of an eggshell tooth finish to it, and it gives a little texture to the paint, so that'll be uh, a nice surface to work on. And it's a little less absorbent than my homemade surface, but it will. Um, I'll, you can still work wet into wet on it with no problem because it does absorb it a bit. So looking at my thumbnail sketch, what I'll do is now transfer that design to the, uh, the panel. And I'll take a little, um, oh, maybe a little red and a little blue, just make up a little brownish color. Maybe lighten it just a little bit with some white just to kind of get it started. And then I do want to thin this a little bit just so I can draw with it. Probably about like that would be a good consistency. So let's see, I'm thinking the, um, let's take my thumbnail here and look at that. The tree is about in this position. And that horizon line or that sloped line that we have is about, about in this area here. You can see how I wear down my brushes by doing this kind of sideways scrubbing. I like the idea of just taking that tree right off the top of the page. We're just going to keep with that thought. Something like that. And back here we've got uh, these little shapes that come down. I was drawing right through the tree just to give a more natural feeling to the, to the lines. And out here it's going to be a water line somewhere, so let's not lose that. It'll be a little wedge of water in the distance someplace. And then we've got sort of this thing going on with the slope here. Then it's going to, have to flatten out a bit so it doesn't look too lopsided. Let's thin that down just a little bit more. Go like this. Keep that opening a little narrower. Maybe pull over this way and come out that way like that and on down. And I do want to make a note where that little bit of water trickling through lives. Be something like that. And where those little rocks will be, which would be somewhere like here. And where that little dark zone lives for that shadow. And then bring that on up here like that. A little tippy thing here. A little more shadow. And let's see, let's make this a little straighter. Okay, and that can be a little flatter there as well. And the nice thing about this is that we can just um, take a little bit of paper towel and scrub that just a tiny bit. Okay, that's a good start for that I think. So let's start blocking in some color. And I'm going to take the largest brush size I have. And it's important when you have uh, these two sizes of brushes to uh, keep on top of the idea that you want to have one for one set of colors and one for another set. This could be warm colors here, this could be cool colors, or I could use light colors or dark colors. Uh, typically what I do is if I have complements working like violets and greens, or near complements, I'll keep one for the violets and one for the greens. In the um, photo I'm using, there's a lot of violet up in this area here, and a little bit of green here. So it's almost like it's those two colors mostly. Um, so I try to keep that in my mind as I work. So let's start off with the darker values first. And we've got uh, a dark green here happening, and then also a dark green down in these areas. So this will be my dark brush. And for my greens, I'm going to mix a little um, cad yellow light, take a little blue. I could go with a thalo green, but it's a little intense. I'd rather have a, have a uh, not such an intense green to start with. Let's add a little more blue to it. 
Now you notice I'm not mixing any medium into it. I haven't thinned it yet either. I want to keep this pretty much right out of the tube to start with. And uh, watch what happens when I apply this. See how thin that paint is? Or how dry it is? But I can scrub that in. And what that'll do is it'll make for a fairly dry layer of paint that'll make it easier to put that next layer over. Now if I thin that a little bit with uh, some thinner, it's a little easier to scrub. So I have to be cautious of how much I'm going to thin this. I think adding just a little bit to it would be fine. So let's mix up a little bit more of this color and add a little thinner to it, just a minimum. If it's too much, I can dab it on my paper towel. Yeah, there we go. I sort of block this whole thing in. Even though the uh, tree has some uh, little frond-like branches that stick out in space, we'll just make it all one solid shape to start with. Just kind of maintain the idea that it's sort of triangular with a more or less flat base. I just noticed there's another tree back here which might be a nice little guy to add, so let's put him in too. That way our big tree won't be lonely out there. It's nice to have a companion for these shapes sometimes. This one's very similar. I'll make them the same green right now, being aware that I can modify that later. Make the one that's smaller and more distant appear more distant by cooling the color and graying it down a little bit. Okay. I'll take that same green and apply in a thin fashion in these shadow areas. Although my brushes are pretty expensive, if you uh, have budget issues, what you can do with the scrubbing idea is just get less expensive ones because it doesn't really matter as much with this first layer when you're just trying to get color blocked in. You can be, um, you know, just buy some cheap brushes from your local hardware store. It'll be fine. Something that's small. That's almost a little too much liquid. go up the edge of the page. And there's another little spot over here that I wanted to make sure I tie it in. And this dark actually extends a little further out to the right here. Let's see where else does that live? Anywhere else? No, I think that's where the darkest dark is going to be for as far as that color goes. And um, the rocks here are going to be dark, but they'll be more of a reddish color. So before I get to those, let's keep the green thing going and think about this dark green mass back here, which is actually a little lighter than that. So I can add uh, either a little white to it or I can apply the paint a little more thinly. Um, see, that's applied thinly, but it's still pretty dark. So let's add a little white to it just to kind of lighten that up a little bit. The white will also uh, cool it off a bit and gray it down a bit. It's still a little too dark. Let's add a little bit more. That's better. Yeah, let's thin that just the tiniest bit. It's a little bluer. Go back over here and fill in that little gap. See, we might have a problem with this tree. Maybe it needs to go a little higher up to break that little edge. So I'll be thinking about that. I'd like it to overlap a little bit so we don't have that solid line um, going into the sky like that without any kind of a breakthrough there. The overlap will also help it get more of a sense of um, distance. Okay. See how thin that is? You can see the, the gesso board through this layer. And let's take some of that dark paint again and go back and just extend that tree to the right a little bit. Make it a little taller. Now this is my best guess at the, uh, the color and value. 
Um, this may, might be a little lighter, a little bluer, or maybe this could be a little darker, but for right now it's good enough I can see the separation between the two. So let's just hang with that for a little bit, and then in the next phase we'll adjust the, um, those values. So next let's um, dive into a little red here and see what's happening with some of these red-violet colors, because they're a little, um, they're dark, darker than this green area that we'll be putting later. So I'm working through my values going from dark to light. So I'll put that brush aside and pick up my other brush. And for violets, I'll take a little red, cool red, maybe a little blue. And I want it a little lighter, so I'm going to add just a little bit of white to it, just to bring it up a notch. And let's do a little test here and see how that's going to look. That's reading is a little too dark. It's almost the same value as that um, tree, so I'm going to add a little more light to it, more white to it. Maybe thin it just a bit more, but again, just being cautious with how much I'm putting down. Could be a little lighter. I like to sneak up on these values before just going whole hog and filling a big area and finding out that it was the wrong value. Okay, that's better. I like that. It's a little lighter. Could be a little thinner so we can get a little more coverage. Yeah. I like the red and the greens, the red violets and those greens. They just seem to make a nice, a nice pair. Could be a little bit more. Too dark, had more light to it. There we go. A little bit more light. Let's see. I need to make sure I remember where that uh, green area is. Bring that right down here to the water area. And let's go over to down here. This area, which is the same material, but it's getting a little more light, so it's going to be a little lighter yet. Let's see. Compare those two. That's probably not bad. Let's pull that in like that. Maybe it's just a tiny bit lighter. And I know those rocks are there, so I'll just go add those in again in a moment. Make a little more that same purple color, too dark. If you talk to yourself while you're painting and sort of articulate your process, um, you'll understand what you're doing, and if you if you can't find a reason for what you're doing when you're talking to yourself, then don't do it. Because you're just blindly putting paint on without any reason. So if you can say, well, I don't know why I put that color down. It just looks right. Think about it. You'll learn faster. And this is going to continue on this way. Okay, now let's um, take a little more liquid here and just put a little bit more on. This will help the paint move around a little faster, and if I spread the thinner around a little bit, it'll dry it, dry a little faster, which is good. This is just the block-in stage. It's just my best guess. I'm just trying to get some color in. And then we can go back and adjust all that stuff later. Okay. That's good. Now let's go back to our green brush and finish off applying this area and this area. I'm being good today. I'm making sure I'm keeping my brushes separate. Sometimes it doesn't work out that way and I end up with my brushes all being the same color. How that looks. That needs to be lighter and yellower. Add a little more white to it just to kind of bring it up without making it too chalky. You can also use a knife to mix your color batches, but I just use a brush. It just works well for me. Could be a little lighter yet. 
And the yellow seems to be a little thicker, so I'm going to add a little more thinner to it. Um, you might be thinking, well, why am I not adding any medium to it instead of thinner? Well, the thing with medium is that um, it has more oil in it, and there's a principle for oil painting that is uh, painting fat over lean. If you added medium to it at this point, it would make it fatter, and you'll be adding a thinner layer over it later. So if you thin it now with thinner, it actually makes it leaner, um, and you're moving in the right direction. You can add the medium in the second phase. So in the block and phase, I never add medium to it. I just add, add thinner if I need to thin it at all. Okay, let's get this in here a little bit more. If this step is laborious for you, you can use a bigger brush. I just happen to like using these smaller brushes. They seem to suit me better. This is a very warm green. Let's fill that corner in and pull this down a little bit like this. Go ahead and put a little bit back there. It's almost a little too thin. So let's spread it around a bit to dry it out a little bit. And then down here, we'll just take that same color and just kind of work it in. Getting close to the violet, but not getting too muddy with it. See if I mix it in a little bit how muddy it gets. Let's keep it close but not too far into it. Okay, so now um, we need to fill in the sky area, the water area, and this little bit of water here. So the color of the sky is going to be similar to the violet, I think. But first let me just fill this spot. I just realized I need to get that little zone in. But it's going to be more in the blue family, so let's rinse out our violet brush a little bit and get a little lighter color happening here. This blue is almost a little too rich. I'm going to gray it down with a little chromatic black. And let's see how that looks. That looks actually not too bad. Not bad for the water. It could be a little lighter for the sky. Let's go and bring that over here. It's sort of a weird day on the photograph. It's sort of a hazy, overcast, not quite sunny day, but it's got some nice rich colors in the grasses. And I'm going to sort of soften that a little bit. And bring some of the same color down here. Figure out how it's going to flow. This paint's still pretty thin. And we'll do some other little decorative things with the, that color at some point. But for now, I'm just sort of feeling my way through how that, that is going to look down here. Okay, now let's go to the sky and um, lighten that same color just a little bit. And it, this paint has gotten kind of tackier, so I'm add a little thinner to it just to loosen it up a little bit. Like that. And that looks even grayer. That reads almost as too gray to me, so I'm going to add a little more blue to it just to kind of make it look a little richer. I think I might have gotten a little green in it by mistake. Better. Could be a little lighter. And again, it's my best guess. I can adjust this later. Oh, I like that. It's got a little bit of a warmer yellowy cast to it. More of a warm gray. 
not quite what I was expecting, but it looks good. And again, don't agonize too much over your color choices because you'll adjust all this stuff in the next, next pass. And whatever you put down is going to liven up and enrich those later layers. Get a little thinner, get it better. There we go. Okay. And that would be the block in at this point. Uh, the color here is a little garish, but we're going to tone that down a bit bring it more into harmony with some of these greens, push it more toward the warmer end of things. Uh, we'll richen up the color here a bit and then adjust our tree shapes and so on. So there's a lot of adjustment to be made, but this is our block in, so I'm pretty good with that. And uh, let's move on to uh, putting that next layer on. Okay, now that we've established the block in, and the painting is still pretty wet. If I take my finger and touch it, I can definitely pull off some of the paint. Um, I'd like to maybe adjust the drawing a little bit. There are some areas that I feel need a little adjusting. It's still very rough. So for example, the horizon line could be a little straighter back here. Um, some of this contour here could be a little more interesting. So I want to look at that. So first, let's mix up a little, um, a little darkish paint just to get some of the darker areas reestablished. Take a little black and take a little red. I'm using my small brush just to have a finer tip to work with. And we still keep this pretty pretty um, much right out of the tube. And let's see, where does this need to be fixed? Let's make this a little more like that, back through there. And maybe pull it out even a little further. Give it more of an interesting little hook there. Come down like this a little bit. The nice thing about this dark paint is it actually will um, add just like a little bit of a shadow edge to this area too. Let's see if we pull that in a little bit more that way. Something like that. I find this almost more exciting in some ways than uh, doing the blocking because I can go back and restate passages, darken shadows if I need to. Uh, make things look a little more interesting from a profile standpoint. Let's continue with that. Maybe this could go more like that. Let's go back to the left side here and look at this edge. Maybe this could be a little flatter. Come through this way. Narrow that a little bit. Maybe pull it back a bit more. Then come down like this. Then mix up a little bit more of that. Pull it on this way. Like that. And let's uh, figure out what's happening with this dark pattern in the grasses. And I'm looking at uh, the more overcast version of these photo references. And even though this is green, I'm working in this uh, black with red because it's just a nice dark warm color kind of reestablish some of these areas. It's a little bit of a divot there. And maybe this could even be pulled down a little bit more. Mix a little bit more of that. Come up this way. It could be a little darker. Go like that. And maybe this whole green, dark green area can be expanded a little bit in a moment. Let me go back to the next step. And let's see, where else? Uh, this tree shape is okay. Let's just maybe darken the shadow down here a little bit. Although there aren't any rocks in this photo or painting, um, this is a good technique also for. Um, adding cracks to rocks, just mix up some dark warm paint and just restate all the planes and so on. Good down here. And then there's this little dark area back here. This is kind of an odd area that we'll have to think about as we're modeling forms. 
And let's go ahead and get that um, little pathway of water established where we think that's going to live. Move that up a little bit more like that. I'm looking for a series of pleasing shapes, curves, angles, and so forth that uh, seem somewhat decorative to me. Rather than being too literal with the um, um, photo, reference photo. Let's see, let's make that a little wider. See, I've moved it up a little bit. It was here, but now I've repositioned that area. And even though the color is a little different, it doesn't matter because I'll adjust that in the next phase. And we do need to figure out where those little rocks are living. So let's think about that. And they were kind of like here. So let's go ahead and put one of those in. Make a nice dark shadow accent for it. A little darker. And I like to create groups of threes. So there's one, two, and here's three. This will be a fun area to play in once we start getting some really wet paint working. Because then we can have a lot of fun with losing edges and softening edges and making edges harder. Okay, the very last thing I'm going to do at this stage is just go through and reestablish that horizon line. So I'm going to use a little bit lighter paint and uh, make it maybe a little bluer. So a little red to that just to kind of gray it down a bit. It's too dark. Let's make it a little lighter. The pan I'm looking at right now is I'm taking some of this uh, white that I tainted earlier in the blocking stage. I just scraped it off and moved it to the edge of my palette before freshening up my uh, piles of paint. So it's a good use of leftover paint if you need to do that. That's pretty good. Let's go ahead and just draw that line in. Okay, that reestablishes the horizon line. Okay, so that's got the drawing fixed for us. And now what I want to do is go through the stage of adjusting shape relationships. So I like to look at the shape that annoys me the most. And right now this red area, this red violet, seems a little intense. So maybe I'll gray that down a bit first. And as I do so, I want to compare it to its neighbors, this shape here, or this shape here, or this shape here, and just look at the qualities of each of those in relationship to each other to help get uh, the balance that we're looking for. Okay, I'll put down my small brush now and move back over to my brush that had the darker colors on it. So this is a bit of green, but the green will gray down that nicely if I need it to. Um, this is where I'm going to show you the approach of uh, handling the brush and getting the paint, um, that thicker wet paint on top of that first layer, which is still somewhat tacky. So let's mix up a little bit of a grayish kind of color for that. I'll take a little white. I'll add a little of that same cool red. And I've got quite a bit more paint here now. So um, the idea with the wet and the wet is you want to have, <coughs> excuse me, have a little thicker paint on top of your brush. Add a little bit of uh, black to it. Uh, it looks pretty good here. Let's see how it looks on the panel. Let's put a little wedge down. Remember how I held the brush when I was showing you my technique is just hold it parallel to the canvas and let the brush, let the panel kiss the paint off. You can hardly tell the difference there. So let's make it a little darker and make it a little grayer. Let's see how that looks. That's grayer, a little darker. Maybe it's still too dark. So I'll add a little more gray to it and add a little more white. Could be a little lighter still. And that's not too bad. It's got nice quality to it. So here's how much paint I've got on my brush. I don't know if you can see that, but it's a good dollop on it. So if I take this and just apply it on top of these areas, just ever so gently, like that, it's just enough to change the, the color of what was already there. I can also soften some of these edges if they're a little too harsh. And it's okay if a little blending happens. It just makes a more interesting painting. And you can always clean up any muddy passages later. This paint's a bit thicker. Let's mix up a little bit more of that. Let's 
see how that looks. And that's not bad. I'm just going to take this and just kind of adjust that whole color area with that one color. I'm still looking at big shapes. I really want to concern myself just with the big shapes and not get too concerned about making these look smaller or break them up into smaller pieces. Just want to keep it kind of loose and abstract. Okay. Let's move a little bit of that back here in the distance just so there's a little continuity between this side and that side. Looks like they connect somewhere. And so is there anywhere else we need this? Maybe a little bit on top of this green. And see, if you're real gentle with it, you can really put complements on top of each other without mixing up, mixing them up too much and getting them muddy. It's going to be all right. You can even hold the brush sideways like this and scrub just a little bit, but if you're careful, if you scrub too much, it'll blend things more than you want. Okay, let's take a little bit of that same color and work it over this green area back here, just so that ties these together just a little bit more. Again, it's just this thick paint right on top of that shape. And since we're working with that color, let's take it and move it down into this area. And as you remember, it's a little lighter than um, the color we just went over because it's getting a little more light. It's a little more horizontal, it's re receiving light more directly from the sky, so it needs to be a little lighter. Got a good amount of paint on my brush. Let's take a little bit of that. I'm not adding any thinner at this point. This is still just the paint right out of the tube. And I'm not adding any medium either, so it's, uh, it's feeling good. It's got a nice texture to it. Work that around a little bit more. Let's make up a little bit more. See how much paint I've got? Quite a bit of paint. Sometimes it's desirable to have the earlier paint layer stir up if you want to gray things down. So you can always uh, be a little harder with the brush if you need to. But the secret is having a big gob of paint on your brush and applying it gently. There is one painting approach where you can uh, do a complementary underpainting or block in and then follow it with real color on top of it. So if you have a lot of greens in the landscape, uh, you might uh, consider starting off with a red underpainting. What will happen is with that next layer when you apply green on top of it, um, some of the little bits of red will pop through just livening things up a bit. But you need to have a delicate touch with that because if you're not careful what will happen is uh, you'll get mud when the red and the green mix together. Okay, a little bit more over here. Okay, that looks good. Maybe add a little bit of a line here just to kind of tie it into that little shape. Good. Okay, so now what bothers me next is probably the, um, the fact that this color back here could be a little bluer and cooler and maybe a little lighter. So the color is not really related to this green or this red on my brush. I'm going to rinse it off just a little bit. And mix up a bluish color. Which is too blue, so let's add a little black to it to kind of kill it a bit. And even though there's no green in this, let's see how that looks on that. Yeah, see it's a little too light maybe. No, maybe not. That's, that's good. But it's a little too intense a blue, so I want to dull it down a bit more. So maybe have a little red this time, which grays it down nicely. If the black isn't enough, you can certainly add the, the red. And if I just have a light touch, some of the green will still show through from that first layer. Let's continue with this. Get 
don't want to get too deep into those little filigrees, but it was important to add a little vertical element there so I can remember that that's what I wanted to do at some point. Yeah, let's just continue that concept over here. On the right side. Okay. That's a good start. And uh, let's put a little line to that back here in the horizon. Make it a little lighter. So I'll add some white to it. Just so we have a little land back here somewhere we can refer to at some point. Okay. Next thing is let's adjust some of these darker green passages here. That could be maybe even a little darker yet and a little warmer. So even though I've got uh, blue on my brush, I can just take a little red, which will kill a lot of the blue on there, add a little cool yellow to it. and add a little green. Let's see how that looks. That's a little warmer. Could be a little darker though, so let's add a little more green to it. And if that's too garish, but it's not, that looks good. I think we'll go with that. So again, just look at the, the amount of paint on the brush. And I like that so much, let's make up some more of it. Is that the same? Pretty close. That can be a little darker. Take a little blue this time and add to it just for variety. And we'll sort of let this fade off in the distance a little bit. And a little bit more would be good. Take a different red this time. And let's look at the big tree shape and think if we can't darken that just a little bit toward the base. And we should do the same with the tree to the right of it. Let's see, where else do we need that dark color? Maybe a little bit down here, just to give us a little more dark on that edge. And let's see, next, we should go ahead and add more of that lighter color down to this little bit of water running through. So let's take our lighter brush and mix up a little bit of that sky color again. A little blue, a little red, maybe a little more white. Let's see, how does that look? It's a little too light for the water, a little too dark for the sky. Mix a little more blue into it. Let's see. Oh, we should cover up this layer back here, which got a little too light because that was sky originally. Let's correct that while we're up in this area. And then let's see where we need to come down with this little color. This is fairly thick paint at this point because I'm going on top of that red. The paint is still pretty uh, workable. I haven't gotten to the point where I need to add any medium to it. If it got a little more uh, thick, I would add a little of that uh, solvent-free gel to it. Probably need a little thread of that coming down here somewhere just to kind of connect these shapes. So it looks like this water kind of continues through. Oh yeah, and over here on the right side, need to do a little bit. Okay. 
So, oh, uh, this is reading okay, this green shape here. I don't think I need to work on that just yet. And the next pass, what we'll do is, um, now we basically have touched most of the different shapes here, making those kinds of adjustments. And the next pass, we'll start uh, adjusting some of the profiles of some of the shapes, like cutting in some of the tree limbs here, getting those to work better. And then also um, darkening up spots that need to be darker or modifying some of the shapes so that they're a little smaller in spots, basically breaking up the big shapes into smaller shapes. And that will be the second pass. As we're working through this painting, I'm having a little difficulty with this area right through here. It's a little um, unresolved with what's happening with the shape and the form. So I think I want to spend a little time on that just kind of making some adjustments that I think would help improve um, the sense of what's going on here. So let's take a little dark paint and do a little exploration and see where we get with that. So mix some more of that reddish, grayish color, which was about like that. I'm going to make it a little darker, adding a little more red and a little black to it. And it um, seems like there's a little event that kind of goes like this, where that might be the top of a form, and then it comes down into more of a shadowed thing here, where the form turns away from the sun a little bit, or the ambient light anyway. There's not much sun in this the day I was doing this photo and see if that doesn't help us get that resolved a bit. And again, I'm just taking some fairly thick paint and laying on top of this earlier wet layer. Okay, it feels a little better. Now this shape over here, it tips down from this area. This is facing the sky. This rolls down away from the sky here. So let's uh, add a little shape here, and this might mark the ridge of that slope, and then it comes off something like this. So it's a little darker as it goes away. And out here it might flatten out a bit more. Let's see, how's that looking? It's looking better. Sometimes you just have to sort of play with the form, and you really need to have a good understanding of what's going on with the shapes in 3D so that uh, you can bring that to your um, to your painting. Yeah, it's going to be better. Slide that right on down. And let's see, if we move over to the right just a little bit, maybe that little line continues a little into the green area, which is okay because we can modify all of that. Down here, it's a little more nebulous in the photo. Let's just go ahead and make that look like that. And this area up here will be mostly flat. It's going to go off the distance, goes away from the viewer. This is like a little bank that spins up a little higher, but it has to go back down to the water level. Because water seeks its own level, and it's going to be the same height throughout here. But this is going to be raised up a bit, so I have to think about that a little. Maybe this will have to be softened a bit into the water at some point. Let's just darken that just a little bit more so I can get um, a real good sense of what's happening with that. That's a little too dark, but that's okay because it just reinforces to me that that's going down. And the same over here. Maybe that's a little darker right through here. And then here. Yeah, and then as we work on the greens in a little while, this will uh, help reinforce this idea of this being a uh, sort of a little slope coming down. Now maybe even on the left over here, I can merge that just a little bit. So this little red area gets more into the green. Okay. So let's let this merge in a little bit more like that. I think that's going to be pretty good once we get to that next layer. So anywhere else I need to make a change? This has got a nice little thing happening here. So let me just reinforce that dark accent just the tiniest bit. And we lost the rocks, but that's okay because they can always be put back in. Okay. See anywhere else we need to correct this. 
Now let's go ahead and move into the green just a little bit and sort of reshape some of that so that makes a little sense. I'll take some of the same, take the same brush and just work back into my greens with it. Let's see, look at this shape here first. That's going to be um, having a little light on top of it. Something like that. And I'll just put a touch of it there now because I can always hit a little harder. It's just a, like a little note for myself so when I go back in a few minutes with the other adjustments that uh, that's something that I want to look at. Anywhere else over here? Maybe this green can even go up into this area a bit more just to kind of break up that large area a bit. And yeah, we'll have to reshape the base of this tree at some point, but I'm going to wait on that, I think. Okay. And then over in this area to the right, you know, maybe this could even be continued as a darker green. So let's just slide over that way a little bit. Mix up a little more green. This is still going to be shadow. It's going to kind of be a continuation of that little ridge. And anywhere else that needs to go. Let's see. It's also good to whistle to yourself once in a while. It breaks up the, the tension in your head. Just to give the shape a little more interest so it's not quite so uh, monolithic. So a little bit of that appears over here. That more of a shadow color. Okay, I think that's... Um, I think that's going to probably be good for now. So I'm a little happier with what's happening in this area and I'll go through with um, paint in a moment and work this over a little bit more to kind of bring more of a sense of distance into it. If you squint a bit, this looks still flat, but by cooling off edges back here and warming up areas in the front, that'll help lay this down so it's a little more three-dimensional. So I'm pretty happy with what's going on with these dark shapes now. Okay, now as I step back a little bit and think more about the painting, I'm looking at this shape of the tree and um, it's still pretty raw. It needs to have some of these little indentations put in where you can see some of the background color and establish some of those little fronds that come out. So I'm going to use a knife now and move on to that uh, to show you how that works. And with the knife, what I can do is carve in little spots pretty easily with thicker paint. And once I've done that, I'm going to start working with the sky and basically work my way from background onto foreground and um, that just seems to work well in a situation like this. So I'll show you how you can use thicker paint. Let's first adjust this, um, the tree shape. So um, before I get into the sky, I'm going to work with this little background shape here, the blue shape of the background hill, a bit of water, a little bit of land. And I can just take the knife and just stir up a little bit more of that blue color. Mix a little bit more of it. Knives come in a variety of sizes, and I like the small one, like I mentioned earlier. It just gives me a little more control over what to do, but it can take longer to paint with. See, that's way too light. Maybe a little darker. Gray it down a bit more. That's not too bad. It could be a little bluer. Can't see how that looks. Yeah, it's good reestablish that area and start looking at the shape of the tree and see how that's going to be changed by that. The base of these uh, fir trees tend to get a little thicker and wider as they go out toward, toward the ground so I can just kind of carve that in a little bit that way. And all trees have um, a unique identity even if it's the same species of tree, they'll all be different somehow. And note, I'm using quite a bit of thick paint on top of this to overlay that green area and cut into it. While we're working on that tree, let's go to the tree behind it a little bit and carve out a few little holes in it. A big one right there, maybe. 
There we go. And we'll go back over the tree with more paint in a moment to uh, make it not look so um, sharp edged. Okay, now let's move into the sky a little bit. So I'll take um, that same color, add a little more white to it. I think that's what we had going for the sky. So we'll test, that's eh, a little too gray. I'll tell more blue to it to make it a little fresher. Mixed up a good pile there. Let's take this and hold it up against the sky. Put a little test down and you can see it's a little, little darker than I probably want. So I want to lighten that up a little bit more. So I'll get a little more white. And it's good to mix up a good batch of this because I have quite a bit of sky to cover at some point. Let's test that again. Looks a little too dark. Let's uh, take a big wad of that and put it there. That looks a little closer to what we had before. So let's use that and carve in some little areas here. I'm sort of following my reference photo a bit, but I'm also taking a little liberty with uh, some of these little branches. Got a little too thick right there, a little too um, sharp edge. I'm just going to scrape a little bit of that off just to kind of make it a little more soft edged. And then let's move to the top of the tree and carve that in a bit more. Okay, that's not too bad. And the little tree on the right is doing okay with that. So let's uh, now go ahead and work more in the sky. So I'll mix some more of that color up, add a little more white to it. And see how much paint I've got on my knife for the sky? It's quite a bit. I mean, you really don't have a lot of fine control over it, but at this point I don't need fine control because I'm more interested in just getting some of this paint laid on top of that other color just to make it a little more solid. And um, one of the reference photos has some interesting clouds in it, so I think I'll take a slightly darker version of that and just put in some little diagonal streaks that might indicate a little bit of interesting cloud pattern. Something like that, maybe. I can soften some of those a bit. See how thick the paint is? Go back down and get some more. For this paint, I used uh, the brush initially and I moved to knife. And what I'll do at the end is maybe soften some of those knife like strokes, which tend to be a little harder edged with the brush again. It's okay to move back and forth between different uh, tools as long as you uh, understand what's happening with the texture and the marks that you're making. You want to make sure that they don't look uh, too isolated and have too many sharp edges in one spot and not enough in other spots. You want the paint to look like it's uh, sort of a constant, um, well, an even application in some ways that you weren't too crazy with the knife in just one spot. You kind of want to work the whole thing all over. So that's looking pretty good. It's got some nice diagonal lines happening there. Let's uh, mix a little bit more of that sky color up and go over to the right side of the tree and just kind of put a little more paint on top of this area. It could be a little bluer. It's got a little too warm right there, so let's add a little more blue to that. Oops, that was a little too much. With the knife, you end up using more paint. Um, that's good and bad. It's good because you're putting thicker paint on top of that thinner initial paint application, it's bad because you're just using more paint and you know, it can work into your budget. So whichever tool you use is totally up to you. Kind of like that little blue bit over there. Let's just soften that up a little bit. Good. Okay. 
move over here to the left a little bit. Now uh, let's uh, look at this big blue shape of the distant hill and carve down some little spots into that. It's a little too even all over, so I'll take some more of that sky color and um, find some major holes or little notches in the photo reference and kind of work my way down into those kind of like that just to give it more of a ragged appearance. It's not quite so evenly edged. You don't want it to be straight across like a knife. Let's go down here a little bit. Do that same thing over here. And that just makes it more interesting. There might even be a little bit that's poking through this hole right over here in the tree. And it can be a little darker right there. It looks too light. Maybe something like that. Okay. So this gives a more interesting profile to that shape and also to the tree. And also the sky where we've changed the values just a little bit. So let's go on down to this area here now. And this is reading pretty well that value. But I wouldn't mind making just a little more uh, solid. So let's see if we can get close to that. That's a little bluer, but I kind of like that. So I'm just going to take a pretty thick wad of paint on my knife and just lay it right on top of that. That could be some little distant bit of land somewhere. And now let's move down to the water again. Again, it's going to be more like the sky color. It's going to be maybe a little warmer. Sometimes you see where the watercolor is actually a little warmer than the um, uh, sky. That's reading really is a little light, but I kind of like it a little lighter there. So this is one of those little variations that you find in nature that if you do some outdoor work, uh, you start picking up on those kind of subtle variations of what's happening with water. I'm going to keep it kind of abstract in the distance. Now I'll work this down a little closer to this area. Might make it a little darker. Maybe a little grayer so it's not quite so blue. Yeah, that's good. And this little bit of land can be a little flatter edged. So let's uh, use our knife to maybe draw a little bit of a line through it. Get a little grayer. Okay, let's test that out. That's looking not too bad. It's quite a bit of paint still on my, my uh, knife. Not as much as I had in the sky, but it's still a nice little chunk of it. Go out that way a little bit. Come back this way. Restate that. And now let's uh, continue down this way just a little bit more. a good thick application of paint. You can do this with your brush too, it's just um, you have to think about um, not scrubbing. With the knife you almost can't scrub, it's almost impossible to scrub. Put a little bit of that back here on the right side. Okay. Now let's um, go to the, uh, the big blue shape of this hill back here and do some adjustments there. I kind of like the, uh, the coloring of it, but maybe just soften some of these edges. So let's get a little bit of that color paint. Work right into that sky color again. A little red, a little blue, maybe a little black just to dull it a tad. That reads as a little warm, I think. So let's add a little more blue to it. Let's see how that looks. That actually reads a little purple, so let's take a little green just to kill it a bit. Okay. Yeah, that reads a little better. It's a little warmer than the blue, and I kind of like that, I guess. And I'm going to keep that island, or that little bit of land, just more um, sort of soft and fuzzy. It doesn't have to have any real um, detail to it. It's more all about implied detail than anything else. And these little variations you get where uh, maybe the color isn't quite right, and you Mix it in, it's okay. Don't have to worry about it. Let's move over to this side where it's a little, little blue. Maybe it should be a little cooler. A 
could probably mix up a little more paint. Getting a little thin there. Make some more blue, a little more red. That feels like it might be okay. But if I hold it up, it's almost a little too purple. It's getting too much like this um, bare earth color. So let's add a little more green to it just to knock it down a peg. That reads is a little greener, but it's better than the red. Got more blue to it though. Yeah, that's good. Let's go back over here and make our adjustments. And sort of carve in little bits of this other tree to the right of it a little bit, just like we do on the big tree. And this one can be a little softer and fuzzier. I don't have to go in as much for those little nooks and crannies if I don't want to. Let's put a little thing up here at the top of the tree, that same color, just make it stick out a little bit. Maybe one over here. Okay, and just kind of continue through this area here. It's going to get a little warmer as it gets closer to us. This point over here is actually a little further away. This is a little closer. So uh, it can be a little warmer, maybe even just a tad darker. Let's mix up a bit more of that color. That's way too blue, Michael. Let's adjust one side here. So instead of adjusting the whole pile, since they don't need that much, let's just scrape off a little bit here and use that to adjust with. A lot of times people will start mixing a pile of paint and the thing just gets bigger and bigger and bigger until you have you know, so much paint that you don't know what to do with it. So if you just take off a little bit on the side and make your adjustments with a portion of that, um, life is better. You don't end up wasting as much paint. That's, that's not too bad. Let's get a little bit more. I leave the uh, the thicker paint a little rougher in the application, then it reads as a little more texture. Okay, I'm going to go over to the left just a little bit and lighten some of that up. That was a little bit dark in some spots, and I'll take some of that bluer mixture that I made up and add just a little bit of white to it. That's a little. Oh, that's not too bad. It's a little lighter than. Maybe, but with that darker spot there, it might be just a ticket. Maybe a little spot there, too. This is that maritime effect where you get this hazy, misty air. Okay. That looks pretty good. Because I've got this thicker paint here, I can take my knife and actually to sort of scrape off that little edge that got a little too far into the water. And I can always restate that little bit of water. There. Okay. So I'm getting pretty happy with what's happening back here in the distance. My next step is to start looking at this tree and establishing a little bit more of what's going on in here. So first, let's look at this dark area. This could be a little darker, I think, still. And then as I go toward the top, it's going to get a little lighter and a little lighter. Some of this atmosphere is going to wrap around the tree and make that a little lighter in value. So continuing with the knife, I can go over to my green pile. The nice thing about a knife is you don't have to uh, rinse it. You just wipe it off with a paper towel and move on. The brush you're constantly stirring and trying to get it clean before you put it the next color. Let's add a little green to that to make it a little darker. Okay, between these two colors, this greenish red and that pale color, I should find a nice happy medium for the tree. Well, that's a nice dark color. Might be a little too dark, but let's go ahead and put it in at the base. Just laying some thick paint over that still wet layer and see if we can't kind of Get that to where we want it to be. Okay. Might be too dark, but we can adjust it. Okay, now I'll take these two and just blend them together a little bit. And that's reading a little too brown, maybe a little more blue. Let's see how that feels up here. 
That actually isn't bad. That's a little grayer than that green. And laying it on top of that is a good thing. Tones down that green a little bit. Let's see if I can reproduce that. That's too light. Take a little more blue. It's a little too dark. Let's try that. It's too, too light. But let's massage it and see where we get with it. I don't think that's too light. I think that's going to work okay. This is not a tree demonstration, so we don't have to spend too much time with the tree shape. We just kind of want to make it look like a tree shape. One tip for that, though, is if you're painting trees, um, treat them as a silhouette before you do anything else with them. No matter how much light and how much dark they seem to have on their boughs, if you start off with a silhouette, um, your dark shape holds together better, and then you can uh, add lights as needed to give it a sunny or an overcast appearance, depending on where you're going with it. Work a little bit of that more of a purple note on top of that green. Even use this knife to kind of blend the edges together a little bit so that it gives a little softer feeling. Let's move that on down a little bit here. Now let's keep it a little greener as we go toward the base and keep it definitely darker. I enjoy working with the knife. It's the only tool you need to take in the field sometimes. You can leave your brushes at home and lighten your load. Okay, now we're going to work down to this darker area. Just kind of take my knife and work that layer I put down there earlier into the paint I'm applying up above. Yeah, it's got a nice feeling to it. Okay. And now let's um, fix that little spot there. It's a little too sharp edged. Let's move on to the tree just behind it and just uh, give it a little of a similar treatment. We don't have to go too far with that because it's in the distance and still kind of chunky. So that's probably too purple. It's a little green to it. I'm just kind of mushing my colors together in a palette, pushing the colors one way or the other. It's kind of neat because you can. Um, if you have a grayish color, a more neutral color, you can push it into different color families by adding that color that you're trying to reach. So here's a red, I'm trying to make it more green, so I just add more phthalo green to it, and that gives me more of a green effect. Yeah, it can be a little darker in there too, so let's just work that up there a little bit. If you had a larger knife, it would take less time, but then you wouldn't have the control over uh, some of these smaller marks that we're working at, working with. Okay. I, I kind of like the idea of these little trees kind of go off the distance, so I'm going to add another little tree to the right of it just to kind of keep that in, in play. Maybe even over here is a little bit more of that same color that goes off the distance. It's a little too dark, so we can just soften the edges a bit by blending some of that with the knife edge. Okay, now at this point we're down to about here, so let's move on down to this area. Just kind of work, working from background to foreground. This is reading is a little flat, so I'd like to cool off this edge a bit and just maybe make it a little lighter in value. So let's mix into our red pile. This is the alizarin crimson I'm using right now, and it's, uh, it's already a cool red. So let's put a little note of that down and see how it looks. 
can already tell it's a little too light and it's a little too rich, a little too vibrant against the, uh, that more muted color. So let's dull it a little bit by adding a little black to it. Or again, I could add uh, green, but the black works well too. And put a little note of that down. It's a little better. Maybe we need to add green to push it a little more into the gray. Okay, it works a little better. And if I let a little bit of that earlier color pop through or let it blend just a little bit with that layer of red, it can raise it down even farther. And I'm going to keep this kind of smooth because it's supposed to be like a sandy bank out there. Let's put a little bit over here to the right of the tree just to keep that color idea happening so we know that the bank continues on to the right of the tree as well. And I wouldn't mind even bringing some of this into that water over on the left side. So let's hit it over here too and just add a little bit of that in. It may be submerged sand. It might be a little bit of sand poking through. Something like that. Make that edge a little lighter. Let's continue to adjust this area up here, make that a little grayer and a little darker until we get happy with that. That's looking pretty good. Okay. And now as I'm looking at this, I see that um, up above in this area, I'd like to sort of change angle this a little bit. It sort of parallels, this parallels this line too much. It would be nice to do some sort of opposing diagonal that would relate more to what's happening down here with this area and oppose the diagonals that tend to go that away. So with a knife, it's a pretty easy adjustment. I can just take this and sort of scrape it up a little bit like that, remove some of the excess paint. Let's adjust this little guy here too and move him. Let's continue the line here. And I'll take some of that uh, watercolor. I have to remix a little bit of that. Let's see how that looks. That's pretty close. Good. So I'll mix more of that and just kind of go back up here and just sort of just slide along. Something like that. And then just adjust that. And because this is wet into wet, with a knife, I can go over very easily and make that kind of adjustment. I can soften that edge just a little bit. I might go back with a brush later to do more of that. And then right here, let's just pull some of this color down. Just to continue that line. Something like that. And there's so much paint on it that it's easy to, easy to do. There, now we've got a nice little diagonal going that way. And let's pull a little bit of this blue paint here and move it right over here just to kind of give the idea that this continues on off the distance that way. So the next thing I want to look at is over here to the right of the, uh, the trees is maybe do some adjusting here. This green is pretty much the same green throughout, so this would need to be cooled off and grayed down a bit to push it back in the distance a bit. And I notice this little piece of light here needs to disappear because it's um, not in keeping with the line that I've painted there. So let's take some of that same background color, just kind of cover it up a little bit. There, it's probably enough. So this was um, that original color. Let's uh, mix a little bit more of that again. Take this blue that I have going on that you put out too much of earlier, put a little green or yellow into it to green it down. Let's see how that looks compared to what we have. That looks a little cooler, not too bad. It could maybe even be just a little cooler yet or even grayer. So let's add a little black to it just to kind of knock it down one more peg. Maybe just a little bit more. And that's looking pretty good, so we'll go with that. 
just kind of adjust all these areas here. Really want this to sit off in the distance, so making it, making it cooler and bluer, just kind of pushing it back, sort of softening some of those little points, maybe even put a little bit right there for continuity. Just kind of slide this on top of the wet layer. And now we can move on down to this area here using the same idea. Maybe keep it just the same quality of green. It got a little cool. Let's add a little more yellow to it to kind of warm it up just the tiniest bit. That's better. And soften some of these little spots. Change that, that little smeared. Let's put a little of that on top of it. Perfect. Good. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with uh, most of what's happening back here. Maybe just add a little more green there just to kind of harmonize it a bit more. Take some of this green and push it over into this left side here as if that color were to continue around behind it. Maybe soften that just a little bit so it's not so harsh. Okay, now let's go down to this line, which right now makes a very stark statement. We'll need to soften up some of these edges, lose some, soften them a bit, keep some a little harder. And I want to think about the modeling of this shape as well. This is raised up and sort of facing the sky, turns around and goes away from it as you go this way. And also would like to warm this up just a little bit because it's going to be a little closer to the viewer so it's going to have a little warmer quality. So I'll add a little red and a little uh, yellow to it. Let's see what that does. That's a little too light. So I can add a little black to it just to darken it just a tiny bit and maybe even a little cool red just to darken it further. Let's see how that looks. That looks, it's a little lighter, but it's better, and it's a little warmer. So I kind of like that. Let's go ahead and push some of this around on top of that, the top of the land. Maybe even work a little bit of that back here just to sort of soften that up a little bit. So that edge doesn't look quite so sharp. Okay. I'd like to take some of that same color and put it over on the left side here. Just to lighten that up a bit and warm it up a little bit. Now let's look at what's happening with the green. The shadow is working well down in these areas, but this could be a little thicker paint, a little more modified, and change some of the edges so they're not quite so sharp around this area. Think more about rounding these shapes a little bit. So let's mix up a little of that. I think we don't have any of that left in the palette. Take a bit of this warmer orange, or excuse me, the warmer yellow, which has an orange quality to it and add a little white to it just to kind of lighten it just a bit more. And that's looking too yellow, so let's add a little blue to it. Makes nice green. And let's see what that looks like over here on the right side. That looks pretty good. It's actually a tad lighter and a little warmer, but it's got a nice quality to it. That's just enough to kind of bring that forward a bit. Now I'm just letting this slide ever so lightly over top that, that little area. Let's grab a little bit more and go over here to this little shape. And let's go over to the right and put a little bit in there as well. Let's just pull that same color all the way over to the right edge. I 
And then as it gets closer to the right, we can cool it off a little bit so that it doesn't seem like a big warm block going off the edge. So I add a little of that uh, cooler phthalo green to it. Just sort of soften that edge a little bit so it's not quite so sharp. Now let's work some of that down to this dark area. It shouldn't be quite so, so sharp through there. Okay, let's soften this up a little bit on the left side. And little bits of this green also are going to appear over here on top of this little hump. It's like a little thing going on here with it. Just to pull some of that color around, maybe a little bit appears over here. And let's continue with a little bit right here. And soften that shadow right here a little bit. Okay. And now let's look at maybe taking some dark color and working it back up into that lighter color. I'm looking for a slightly warmer note. Uh, overall, we have kind of a cool day, so you tend to find um, warmer accents down in the shadowed regions. So I'll take a little red and a little blue and make sort of a brownish color. Maybe add a little more blue to it to darken a bit more. It still looks a little cool, so let's add some more of the red. And now let's put a note down and see how that looks right here. That's a nice reddish warm note. I like that. Looks good in the context of that green. You can work a little bit down into that alluvial area, a little tidal spot there. Let's go over here and continue that same idea. Take a little bit more over here. And let's work a little bit up into this shadowed zone too so it doesn't seem like it's all in that one spot. Have to mix a little bit more. It looks a little redder. Let's see how it looks. Yep, too red. Let's add a little green to it just to knock that down a peg. That reads a little better, not quite as rich. Let's just move this around a little bit more. Let's take some of that and also just move some down in here to this uh, sandy area. This is in that color, it doesn't all live in one spot. Okay, now let's go over to the left side here and adjust this green patch, taking the same concept that we've used over here on this side. So let's mix up a little bit more of that same color, using that bluish color, adding a little bit of yellow to it. How does that look? That looks not too bad. Let's just kind of work that in over on top. There it looks a little gray. Let's add a little more of uh, this intense yellow to it, that cooler yellow is to bring up the, the chroma a notch. That looks, looks okay. Let's go with that. Let's see where we end up. This is a flatter area. It doesn't have quite the same um, modeling that we see on the right side. So I could almost take this color and just kind of work it right over that. As we get toward the base, let's make it a little cooler, a little more blue to it. And see how that looks. Mm, a little too gray. Let's add a little more of this intense phthalo green to it. Just to bring it up a notch in chroma. That looks better. Let's go ahead and work that in. Got some garish colors going here with the red violets and these greens. You have to bring them together somehow. Okay. 
Okay, let's work that whole area. I think I'll take a little of that same color and work over to the right side here just to um, bring that cooler color in. Put a little bit up here. Maybe a little bit more. Typically when I get a painting to the stage, I start working it uh, more than just in one spot, especially if I feel like adjusting it in another location might help uh, pull the painting together. So I step back and look at it for a second. I've got these very intense green passages, and I'm almost thinking that if I cover this up, I kind of like what's going on here with this bluer green. So maybe I'll take some of that kind of color and work back into some of these richer areas. So let's go make some of that up. Take a little green, add a little cool red to it to gray it down a bit. And that's looking still a little too, too dull. So let's add a little more of this cool yellow just to bring it up one notch. Let's see how that looks compared to that original. It's a little too light, but the color is going the right direction. Let's add a little blue. A little black. And then work a little of that yellow back into it again. Okay, let's see how that looks. Yeah, that's pretty good. So now let's work some of this right on top of that. And here we're working like our third layer of, of um, color on top of color. So it's still very wet beneath it, but this little bit of bluish color really brings out the it really helps harmonize things, yeah. This green is maybe a little too blue against that color, so let's add a little red to it just to kind of kill it a bit more. Yeah, that's better. And here I might even start using some of my, uh, it's the night to sort of simulate some of the little grasses that have little blades sticking out and little clumps and so forth. Yeah, this reads is better. It was too, uh, too rich of a, and too warm of a green before. Okay, let's work some of that down here. Okay, now we'll move over this direction a little bit more with that same color. Just kind of cooling things off a little bit more. On a day like this where you have uh, sort of an overcast situation, you often find that um, little bits of that sky color or cloud color get bounced onto the tops of grass blades and so on, which gives it that cooler cast. You know, let's go back here in this distance to add a little bit of that here. Okay. And now we'll continue to the left side over here and just work a little bit of that into these areas. Kind of knock those down. As I do this, a little bit of that um, earlier layer is blending up with the paint. And that's okay because it moderates that, um, that bluish color. Take a little more yellow. Maybe a little more yellow. Let's see. Could be a little cooler, so that's had some blue to it. Yeah, that's good. And as we get closer to the foreground, we can be a little freer with the strokes. Uh, I tend to keep smaller strokes in the distance where things are further away, and then um, I make them a little more large and haphazard as we get toward the foreground area. Okay. It's looking better. Now let's... Um, Let's think about what's happening with this little line of light here. It's reflecting the sky, so it should have maybe a little more of this sky color, which is this sort of a bluish note. So I had a little bit of that left over here. Let's add a little more white to it to make it a little lighter. I think this will be pretty close to what we want. Yeah. Put a little bit 
more of that in. And then I'm also going to take some of that and move it over to this little patch on the right side. It's a little thick. Let's clean that up a little bit. And now one thing that's happening, I notice, is that this um, color is pretty much the same all through here. In a real life situation, it's going to be cooler back here as it gets further away. It gets a little warmer as it comes closer to you. So since I'm not quite sure what's happening with the gradation, how quickly it should become warm, I'm going to go ahead and warm up this foreground area as much as I think it needs to be warmed up. And then I can gradate it to get back to that distant shot. So let's put a little red in. Red's always a nice color to warm it up with. And a little yellow. And I have this nice warm mixture. And you can see how warm that looks against that area. And since the paint below it is, or in the first layer is still kind of wet, by taking this in, it's kind of massaging it in, which will help stir up some of that earlier layer. I'm pressing on quite hard with the knife now. This will uh, mix in a little bit of that pinkish layer with this warmer note just to moderate it somewhat. And I kind of like that color. It really livens up that foreground. So let's do a little bit more over on this side since it's um, just as close. And also maybe over in this area here we'll add a little bit of that. Just to kind of get a little color going. This is where you can use the wet and the wet to your advantage. You can do a little blending while it's still wet, instead of having it locked into place and not being able to change it. It's a little too intense right there. You can also scrape it out with a knife too, which is another benefit. Maybe just sort of soften that a little bit too while we're there. Okay, that's come forward nicely. So now what I want to do is take this kind of color and gradually get it to that cooler color there. So I can just mix a little of my pinkish colorant that I still have on my palette and do a little test. That reads is a little too light. So let's add a little of that cool red back into it. Maybe you remix that whole pile. And that reads as being too dark, which it is. So let's add some of that warm yellow back into it. A little bit of red, which will lighten it a bit. That's reading is better value-wise, but it's a little too warm now. So let's add a little blue just to knock it down a peg. And that reads is better. So we'll just work that all in through here, just to kind of warm it up a little bit more. And as I move back in the distance here, I have less on my knife, so it gets cooler just because of the that pinkish red violet that's that's already back there. And I can take my brush or my knife and sort of soften the little transition where the the grasses come down to the water. Okay, let's do the same over here. Take a little bit of that same mixture. We've got a little bit of it left. Let's see if I can't warm this up a little bit too. Must have some brown here somewhere I can add to it. This is part of the pleasure of working with paint is that you have all these different piles of color that you're working with. And chances are you already have something on your palette that's going to work. And this will help with the, uh, the color harmony of the piece by just kind of poking around and seeing what colors you have that'll work for you out of the mixtures you've already made. I find this so much more enjoyable than pre-mixing all my colors and just going with the colors I've pre-mixed. Okay, that's looking pretty good. This definitely comes forward now, and that definitely goes farther away. I can make uh, this area go a little further away by even cooling that off even more. So let's mix up some of that cool red. I'll just take a lizard crimson and white and see how that looks. It's a nice cool color. It's also a little lighter in value, so that'll help push that away even even more, sort of keep that kind of soft. Let's 
go over to the left side here and do some of the same. Just let that dissolve into the water back there. We don't have to know too much about it because it's off in the distance and it's not the, it's not the center of interest. This could be a little softer right through here. And let's lighten this area up just a little bit. Okay. This reads a little awkwardly to me right here, so I think I'd like to maybe change that shape and put a little divot of darker color. just to kind of move this out like that a little bit. But it could be a little cooler. Use your knife to wipe away passages. And probably this could be a little darker through here. So let's go back to that color. Make something that's close. That's a little too gray. That's better. I want to do like a little bit of a, a shadowy event in here. To soften that edge a little bit. Okay. Add a little mystery into it. Okay. The same here. Make it a little richer. And let's do another one of those. And a little richer and warmer yet down here. Okay. Let's see. I think I could take some of the same color and maybe break this shadow up just a little bit right there. I think I have a little bit of that color. That's too warm and too light. So add a little more blue to it. Just to kind of knock it down a peg. That's looking pretty close. So let's just take this and just kind of break that up a little bit. Maybe darken it just a little bit more as you move into this zone. Got kind of a bit of rich color there just happened, but that's okay because we can sort of mix it in with the green. And don't forget as we go through, we want to keep this richer and warmer down through here. Almost like to move some of this green color into the water just a little bit down here to sort of make it tie in together better with the other green passages. So I'll take just a little bit of this green, maybe put a note of it like right here, or maybe it's reflecting a little bit of color from up above. Maybe put a little bit of that over here. Also, in this kind of situation, you often see. Um, green bits of seaweed, so that's going to be a little harder to represent. It's not going to be quite green, it's not going to be quite red, but some sort of a rusty color in between. And it would be something like that. 
and they tend to sort of follow this whole tidal flowing event. Let's make up a little bit more of that. And the knife is great for this because you can just kind of do these little subtle things like that. And finally, I think what I want to do is put a little lighter note of warm color in the water. I'll take some of this pure white, which has got a warm tint to it. It's uh, Gamblin's warm white. And I have quite a bit of my knife. Maybe I should knock that down a bit and not use quite as much. So my palette, what I can do is spread out a thin layer like this and then wipe off my knife and take the knife and just go through like this just to get a little bit on the edge. And what that does is it gives me a nice little razor sharp line of pigment or paint on the side of the knife. And I can just take this and just very lightly find a place where it would make sense. Maybe here and just hit that a little bit just to get more of a little light accent. I'll do that again because it wasn't quite enough. There we go. Just a nice little glint of, of light coming from someplace. And I'd like to add a little bit of that in the distance on the water as well. So maybe there's going to be some of it like right here. Just to kind of warm things up a little bit. It's a little thick so I'll take a little bit off. I took off a little too much, so I'll put some of it back. Paint is, is malleable. It's almost like clay. Imagine yourself a potter just kind of shaping a lump of clay, massaging it this way and that way until you get the desired shape that you want. Let's try that again. Yeah, there we go. Nice little light accent. Now I also want to put a little bit of that in the sky because this color has to come from somewhere. And I'm thinking right over here would be a good spot for that. Just a nice little dollop of it. There might be a little bit more over on the right side, just a touch. Somewhere like that. And it sort of follows this diagonal thing going on with the lines. The only last thing I think I want to do right now is uh, look at the shape of the bottom of the tree. And right now it's almost a perfect cylinder. I'd like to extend some of this green out just a little bit. So let's make up a little bit of that green if we can remember how to make it. It was green, blue, that yellow orange, maybe a little bluer than that. Let's hold it up there. That's way too light and way too green. Let's dull it down a bit with some black. Okay, that looks more interesting, but maybe even bluer. Okay, let's try that and see how it looks. That looks pretty close. So we're just going to take this and just kind of stretch those branches out a little bit more. Go back to the left side and do a little bit more over here. Maybe one of them sticks out a little further. Something like that, maybe. A little dark. Let's lighten that up a bit. And I think that's pretty close. Now we need to go back in and punch some of the holes back into it from behind. So I've got some more of this color, which is pretty close. I could also just take some of the paint that's already there and just kind of move some of that over like that. There we go. Temptation with the small brushes, you want to get too finicky with some of these little shapes, so let's stop with that one. And just stepping back, let's adjust this little piece right here. I think I want to take a little break from it and, and see what we need to do next.
After taking a look at the painting, I've decided that this area over here on the left is still a little confusing to me. Um, so I have this shadow here kind of coming this direction, then this line continues, implying that maybe this ridge continues, which doesn't make sense with this water flowing over it. Uh, so what I'm going to do is scrape out this area with my knife and then repaint it so that it does make sense. And uh, my thought is to basically extend that dark line and have the water going off out of the left of the canvas here. So let's just take out this white area. Take out this green area. And we'll just mix up some of this darkish paint and kind of continue that thought. So let's mix up a little of that. It's a little red with a little green into it to kill it and darken it. And that's reading is a little too cool, so maybe a little more red. Okay. Let's see how that looks. That looks a little light, but it's close, so a little more red to it. Maybe it's a little black to dull it. That's reading a lot better. Let's just take that whole idea and just put it right across this. Now this really is painting wet into wet. Uh, we're taking this mat dramatically different colors and values and putting right over pre-existing paint. And you can see how that sort of continues the shadow idea. So the only thing we have to do next is take this water and kind of continue it that way. Let's sort of gray that down a little bit. Maybe even add a little bit more of a darker shadow edge. Okay. And now we can take this. Um, this color of gravel that's that lighter pinker color and kind of work that back up in this direction. This will be a fairly quick, easy fix. And it's the kind of thing that you sort of are thinking about as you're painting that something isn't quite right. And it's until you step away for a minute and think about it that it becomes a little clearer to you that something needs to be done, uh, but you might not be quite sure. That's a little too light. Let's put a little green into it to dull it as well. That looks pretty close. So let's just take that color and kind of work it all along through here over that green. Just paint over it. There we go. Okay, now it's reading better. We've got this little wall here of something, some kind. And this is a little flattery beneath it. reinforce that and soften this greenery here. And then we can take this little light line of water, maybe just make it a little dull. So it's a lighter value, but not quite as light as that. Let's put us like a little trickle of that coming through. And maybe just soften that a little bit. And then take the knife and just kind of hit that just very lightly just to kind of break up that, just a little bit. And that looks better. Um, what I think I'll do also is maybe take um, a little bit of this greenery now and just extend that over here, maybe just a little bit back in this area. And then I think we're going to be good with that spot. So I think I've got more of that greenish. It's a little too light. Too light and too rich. That's good. And now let's move over here behind that berm and just to this tree and just kind of throw a little green in this red area just to kind of make that make sense. That looks better. 
I'm even thinking maybe this water can be a little like this, just to move over to the left just the tiniest bit, just to um, give that more of a flatter angle. Don't want it too light. Just to soften up that edge. And you know what? I'm going to lighten the top of this just a little bit more so it's not quite such a dark shape. Just, just give the idea that the whole thing has become sort of soft and fuzzy off at the edge of the vision. And we don't really care too much what's happening there. It still makes sense. Maybe it flattens out, maybe it doesn't. Good. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that now. Makes a lot more sense. Okay, now let's uh, look at the tree. There are a couple of other small adjustments I'd like to make. One is to take uh, a little lighter paint and kind of lighten up these tips a bit because it's reading is a little too dark against the sky. So I'm going to take a little blue and a little green and a little red just to dull it down a little bit. And let's see how that looks. That looks lighter, so that's good. Just kind of go through that and soften up those edges a little bit. And the other thing I want to do is um, join these two dark shapes, these two trees, a bit more right in that area. And the reason for that is they look a little too separate, and it's nice if you can join your darks. That's too light, and the wrong color on top of that. It's not quite green enough. This is looking a little dark, but let's see how it looks. Yep, that is a little dark. Let's add a little bit of this lighter gray to it. Okay, it's still a little dark. There we go, it's starting to tie those two shapes together a bit more. Maybe even do this one right here just a little bit more. Good. The other thing I want to do is uh, take a dark over in this area, and a dark um, pinkish color is good for that because it's a continuation of that bank. This is pretty close to it, so let's move a little bit there and move a little bit over here. Got a little light, didn't it? Add some more red to it, too, and darken a little bit more. Get more of a red cast. Yeah, that's better. I can actually just sort of soften that just a little bit. I could use my brush if I wanted to soften these edges, but I've already used the knife so much at this point that uh, if I were to suddenly change the brush and just do that in a few areas, it would look maybe a little funny. So I'm happy with what's going on with the knife, so I'll just continue that idea. Now this, I just noticed, has um, some of the brush stroke texture left, so I'm just going to take my knife and just kind of work over it just to smooth out those strokes and make it look more like a knife was used on it. Okay, um, let's see what needs to happen next. I think we're at the point where we can sign the painting. So what I like to do for signing paintings, even if it's not quite done yet, is to um, take the tip of a brush and to scratch into uh, either the lower left or the lower right hand corner. So what I'm going to do now is uh, take my um, brush that seems to have a fairly good tip on the end of it, such as that, and just sort of scribe it in. And you can't quite see that, but it's got quite a bit of texture to it. Well, I think we've got a great painting here. Uh, so if you'd like to find out more about, uh, about my books and videos, please check out uh, northlightshop.com where you can find a number of videos in oil and pastel uh, and dealing with different techniques. And then also, uh, please go to my website, michaelchesleyjohnson.com, where you can see my workshop schedule, links to my blog, and other useful technical information. Uh, so again, thanks for watching.